Hi, everyone. Welcome to the special coverage from the 42nd ASEAN Summit 2023 here in Labuan Bajo, taking the theme ASEAN Matters, the epicentrum of growth with me, Rahma Alia. Now, the Indonesian Ministry of State-Owned Enterprises looks at this opportunity in the 2023 ASEAN Summit as an opportunity to show an ASEAN country or a Southeast Asian country as the center of economy. Now, aside from that, the state-owned enterprises are also expected to collaborate with developing to develop the tourism sector, as well as increasing the national potential, not only in Indonesia, but in other ASEAN members as well. Now, regarding the role of Indonesia as the chair country of ASEAN this year, we'll talk further with the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises Enterprises, Minister Eric Tohir. Thank you so much, hello, Minister Tohir, hello, hello. for coming How here. Are you? All good? We're good, we're good. Beautiful Very place, hot. Eh? Yes, indeed, indeed. Have you been enjoying? Yes, many of the delegation also was surprised with the development of Laban Bajo, mm -hmm. which is, I think, most of them uh, mentioned four years ago. I, I believe is nothing they say here. Yeah, and this is why Indonesia seriously building the development not only on tourism also but also in the economic sites yes creating jobs yeah. to make sure our economy is still growing for the next futures around five percent it's around important five percent it is important and it is indeed Labuan Bajo is now the super yeah. priority yeah. this is one of the projects mm -hmm. for the center of growth within the east of Indonesia mm -hmm. besides also Papua and other places yeah. All right, that's great to hear, Minister Eric Tohir. So now let's start with the achievement of SOEs. Within the last three years, you made transformations, uh, you know, fulfilling this ESG in yeah. all the entities of SOE yeah. and making sure that it's not only serving the public, but also very much benefiting in terms of financials. So yeah. how has it been so far, sir? Well, the transformation of the state on press, this is nonetheless because of the full supported by Mr. President's since day one, he asked me to join the cabinets. He told me to make sure the transformation of the center is really, really important for the countries. As a balance, not only we also uh, pushing a third of our economy, but also to make sure we are providing the best solution for the people of Indonesia in terms of uh, jobs, in terms of make sure also if there is some issue in the economics, we can come in as a solution. So this is why actually it's very important to make sure the state on enterprise uh, at this stage to show result to what the presidents want in terms of the transformations. This is why since they want that we want to make sure the perception of the state enterprise that before was perceived as a corrupt and also two bureaucrats because there is a uniqueness of a state enterprise. Why? Many of the ministers usually um, pushing ministry as a program base, which is true. But the uniqueness of the state enterprise ministry is a performance base. So it, it, it's a bit there because we are corporations. This is why uh, we are trying to transform very hard uh, the state enterprise, not only the leaderships, but also creating a system so that the state enterprise can be continue to become part of the nation solution in terms of the economy. Yeah. This is why we reduce the number of uh, state under from 108 to 41. Yes. Uh, the grouping from 27 to 12 groups. And through the efficiency and the chance of our business models, mm -hmm. now you can see the people can see also the government can see that our profit is increasing from 13 trillions to become 124 trillion mm. and the last one is around 240 trillion in terms of cash value yeah. because actually the number was written down is 303 trillion but mm. there is around 60 trillion because of the restructuring of Garuda so it's non-cash ah. this is why uh, we're giving right now, I think this is the, the first in history of the state enterprise to contributing around 80.2 trillion mm -hmm. to the Indonesian government. Right. And this dividend, of course, he used for the government, mm -hmm. for the program can have helping the Indonesian people. Right. 
so this is something that we are uh, proud of mm -hmm. but this is not because of me too mm -hmm. because of the support of my team yeah. and also the support of other colleague ministers right yeah. colleague ministers are also helping so having all these transformations minister tohir uh, how do you think the transformation can help in developing the tourism for indonesia uh, yeah, yeah. we have in journey under the state-owned enterprises yeah. so how do you think uh, it can help with the tourism sector yeah. develop especially we are hosting many international events lately actually not only tourism hmm. we are transforming the state enterprise to be a solution on help on tourism on finance for ultra micro for small medium enterprise for also a solution to solve the issue of sustainably energy food and so on so for example what we believe to give the solution of this we have to create a ecosystem cannot be stand alone on each of the company have to working together this is why when uh, the discussion I have with Mr. President, Mr. President have a vision of five new Bali. For example, one of them is Labuan Bajo, Toba, and so on. So then I say, Mr. President, of course, one of the solution to uh, give a solution on tourism also, by the state enterprise try to be coming in first. I think this discussion or this uh, story of state owners coming first is, is, is no a new uh, a new one have them happen if you look at also in bali in the 80s there is no sadua projects so this is why uh, to develop the we have to be present there three things number one to have a solution on the logistics side because when you build uh, ecosystem and tourism you have to make sure the supply of energy is there. The supply of goods have to be present there. Then the second, then you creating a major projects like Nusa Dua. In Labuan Bajo, which is what we built right now in this area, Merua or Mori. Yeah? This is the second pass. The third one, we have to be present with the people around to believe also their business side, which is the small medium enterprise, the craft. Uh, this is why in Labuan Bajo, since three years ago, we not only building the projects of Marora area, Mori area, but also we build port. And we try to escalate the airport actually in Labuan Bajo become international airport. But too bad, you know, we signed the agreement data with some of the partners globally to bring traffic, then COVID coming. So we are pursuing that one. Then at the same time, uh, we help the people around to become a value creation for the tourism itself. The craft, the small, the restaurant, and so on. So I checked yesterday one of the program, what we call PNM Makar, which is actually we giving loan to women in the village, one to four million. Yeah. In Flores area, we it's cover already around 149,000 women which is a number of money is around 435 uh, uh, billion rupiah. So this is the impact. Yeah, not only just building the infrastructures, yes. but the also impact. yes, the real impact and the system around it. So. We're, we're talking about Indonesia, uh, but in ASEAN, as chairman <laughs> this year, the state-owned enterprise ministry also needs to collaborate with the other ASEAN member states. So how do you uh, address all the challenges and increase the regional economic collaboration between the other ASEAN countries? Again, cannot be only us. Mm. This is why the president, uh, Jokowi, mm -hmm have uh, many discussion during at this stage with many countries to make sure we as the region understand mm -hmm. that Southeast Asia is the future development of the world, the future economic growth of the world. By doing what? Not only stable on the political side, yeah. but we have to be a solution for global as 
part of the supply chains, yeah. which is, has been disturbed mm -hmm. in the last two years, yeah. three years, because of COVID and also the war. Mm -hmm. So this understanding, President Jokowi is trying to discuss with them. On the other hand, myself as the state owned enterprise ministers, I've been discussing this for a couple of years with uh, other colleague ministers from different countries. For example, like Singapore. Two, three years ago, I was traveling to Singapore to present an ID. Why don't Singapore and Indonesia collaborate and see to build a sea tourism? So, for example, the moving of the yacht from Singapore, the cruise, the yacht mm -hmm. from Singapore yeah. to Jakarta, to Bali, to Labuan Bajo, to Raja Ampat, and go back. So, we can create a ship. Uh, 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 the, the line of the cruise system between the two countries. Mm -hmm. That's number one. The number two, which is the last project we've been discussed, Indonesia is a very big, uh, huge potential for digital economy. Yeah. Uh, so we have a collaboration between Indonesia and Singapore through our partnership in Telkomsel, Singtel and Telkom. Mm -hmm. So with this base, what we discussed with Singapore at that time, we need to step up the partnerships mm -hmm. by creating value for the Indonesia future digital economy. Right. Mm -hmm. So the telecom cell can become the aggregators for content and so on. So reinvest back to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. At the same time, telecom to build infrastructures for this digital economy. Singapore can also be a part of this creating together data centers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Singapore also need data center. Yeah. The land of Singapore compared to Indonesia, Very we are limited. much bigger, so we can collaborate on that one. Mm -hmm. The discussion we have with Malaysia, I just have lunch right now with some of the in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Why don't we not collaborating to build our energy mm -hmm. supply between the two countries? Especially right now, we are very neighbor with Malaysia since we're moving our capital city mm -hmm. next to each other. Very close. So if we can create together mm -hmm. a, a right balance between a future green energies, this is something that a solution for both countries too. Mm -hmm. Then this is something that we want yeah. to cobble through the regions by giving a win-win solution on the two country partnerships to grow the economy together, not stand alone to one each other or take advantage to one each other. Yes. So sometimes I giving a joke to some of my uh, counters, mm. colleagues from different countries, it depends what we see to our neighborhood. Mm. This is we want to create a win-win partnership or taking advantage. Yeah. Ah, this is something that mm -hmm. not workable. Right. So this is something that we have to respect uh, between the neighbor mm -hmm. to give solution for both country and mm -hmm. also for the people. For the spirit of for the spirit of partnership as a Southeast partnership. Asia. Yes. Uh, All right. Community. All right, Minister Tohir. But when we see you and also Indonesia, very, very strong, uh, we have sports as well <laughs> that needs to be developed. Indonesia is part of the International Olympic Committee or the IOC yeah. member and as well yeah. as uh, FIBA Central Board uh, member. How do you boost sports collaboration in Southeast Asia? Mm. I really believe uh, to strengthen the relation of two countries, mm. not only through just G2G or B2B. What is most important? People to people connections. Mm -hmm. So if we want to build a strong relation for our neighbors, it cannot only the perception of, oh, Indonesian need jobs in Malaysia. Or, oh, maybe we need this from different countries. But to create a sustainable partnerships in terms of culture, sport, these relations will be strengthened, the G2G and the B2B. Right. So we can become one. Nah, I really believe through sport is mm -hmm. the easiest part. We are connecting to each other. Mm -hmm. This is why, for example, at the beginning, when we bidding FIBA World Cup, Basketball World Cup, 
the proposal that times is between Indonesia, Philippines, with Thailand, Malaysia, or Singapore. But, you know, to discuss among Southeast Asian is not also easy. Yeah. Uh, the discussion stop because there is no content. Then, we and Philippines no stop. So, why don't we say, okay, we bring Japan to this partnership. So this is the first time actually in FIBA competition, World Cup, collaboration by three countries, Indonesia, Philippines, and Japan. Actually, it will be Indonesia, Philippines, and some of our counterparts. Yeah. The same thing if we want to be doing future World Cup or future Olympics. Cannot be just Indonesia alone. Yeah. If you look at what happened in FIFA World Cup, FIFA increasing to become 48 countries. Is the next World Cup is collaboration between US, Canada, and Mexico. So regional play, it is something, you know, in the futures that each country have to open to think on collaborations. This is the new era. So I really believe why I really push and believe on people to people relation to sport and of course cultures yes. yeah this is something actually can strengthen the partnership between the Southeast Asia community. Okay, thank you so much thank for you. speaking with us here in the C2D thank studio you. in Labuan Bajo with a yes. beautiful setting. Good view. Yes, very good view. And uh, once again, thank you. And thank you hopefully so we will be talking again soon. No, thank you. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be our here. Our pleasure as well. So thank that you. was our discussion with the Minister of State and Enterprises, Eric Tohir. And that's the coverage from the 42nd ASEAN Summit here in Labuan Bajo. We'll be reporting more from here. My name is Rahma Alia and bye-bye for now. Thank you.